Okay, so just a few blocks north of here, a little south of Blur Street, there's a back alley garage with a communal workspace and a group of makers who are passionately working away on this amazing machine that can make anything. The same thing's happening over in Kensington Market on a second floor apartment. And in fact, in cities all over North America, there's this movement brewing in garages and workshops. And I'm gonna start to tell you guys that about that by describing another revolution that we've experienced in our lifetime, the change in media. And so we used to have the mass media, the old school media, big monolithic corporations that would send you their message through newspaper and television that you'd be left to consume. And I want to contrast that with new media, the type that we're all familiar with now, the internet, this amazing participatory democratic platform that we can all take part in and that we're all empowered to become creators or at very least curators of the content that we consume. And I want to take that comparison and bring it into the physical world. And so I want to tell you that mass production is just like the old media. All the goods that we use every day, they're mass produced by a few large corporations that actually own the means of production, that have the capacity to, to choose what you're able to buy and not able to buy when you go to the store. And the revolution that's per percolating in these makerspaces all over the world right now is all about mass customization. It's the counterpoint to mass production. It's the idea that the creation of your physical goods, you can be a participant in their design and fabrication and you can take ownership of what you purchase, what you buy, so it fits into your personal identity. The machine that's catalyzing this whole revolution is this humble wooden box, which we actually have here tonight in the corner up there. It's the 3D printer. And so this is at the heart of every makerspace in these back alley garages. And what's so amazing about this machine is it's capable of producing any form. There's no restrictions. And so let's reflect for a moment on just how this works and what it means. We're all familiar with MP3s, these little digital packets that we can pass to our, to our friends to share songs, to share music. Well, the same thing actually exists for physical objects. They're called STL files. They're little packets of information that we can replicate and share across the internet that store the instructions about how to make a physical object. And so the significant thing about the 3D printer is it's capable of reading these files and actually producing that digital representation and turning it into a tangible physical form by depositing layers of material one at a time with no restrictions. You can create any shape you like. And this is significant because it means that unlike mass production, the means of production has been decentralized. And that's powered, empowered designers like us to, to launch a product, to bring a product to market, to design it, to fabricate it and distribute it from our living room at a, almost no cost. When previously bringing a, a product to market would cost a major corporation tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And so this is the revolution right here. The other side to this is since the 3D printer is fundamentally a bridge between the digital and the physical world, now all the amazing algorithms, the computational design tools, the stuff that organizes the data that we use every day on the internet, we can bring that computational power into the physical world. And so what that means is it changes the way we think about design. Instead of just designing singular objects, we can start thinking of design as a platform. We can start designing objects as systems where one idea is encapsulated in an algorithm and there's the capacity to generate thousands of variations of that idea or, or that object. And this is really important because what it allows is highly personalized items, highly personalized artifacts, something that you can personally identify with that's truly yours, that's one of a kind and not bought off the shelf, not replicated anywhere else. And so the other big implication for this technology is we can reverse the process. We can start taking objects that exist in the physical world. Here we have the classic Eames chair. And what we've done is we've taken this chair and we've digitized it, we've 3D scanned it and brought it, plucked it out of the physical world and into the kind of freedom, the computational tools we have in the digital world where we can start to twist and transform it, where we can take these really high level computational design algorithms that I was describing before and actually remix physical objects. We can reinterpret them, do new things with them that were never intended before. And so in this project, just like the Eames were, were experimenting with the fabrication methods of their time, this is the experiment of our time with the means that we have now. And so in this instance, we've reinterpreted their classic chair as we've taken the saddle and used it as a vertebrae in the spine. And so we've created this beautiful sculpture as a project for the Textile Museum of Canada. 
And this kind of truly embodies like the power that we have now to just arbitrarily close that loop, to take something from the physical world, transform it in the digital world, and bring it back to reality in a completely new way. And this isn't just like an artistic and abstract movement. We can actually take common day-to-day -day objects and we can hack them. So we had a client recently who asked us, they wanted unique gifts for their staff for Christmas. And so we took these Pez dispensers and popped off these cute little princess heads. And we, we literally 3D scanned their entire staff. <laughs> and so what we did for every single person, they now have, instead of just this throwaway tchotchke that's meaningless to them, now they have this intimately personal artifact. They've got something that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world, something that's truly about them. They have their head on top of a Pez dispenser. <laughs> And what's really exciting about all this stuff, the most important part, is it's, coming, it's becoming mainstream right now. This is the website called Thingiverse. It's a massive repository of physical objects, these STL files I was telling you about. You can go on, you can search any object, you can download it. You might not have a 3D printer yet, but in the future you'll know someone who does. And you can contribute back to this and participate in the evolution of these designs and objects. And what we're trying to do as a company is take all these amazing computational design tools and make them mainstream, make them available to all of us so that you guys don't just have to buy things off the shelf anymore. You can participate in the creation, in our case, jewelry, but of every object you own. You can personalize it and make it truly yours. And ultimately, that's what this whole revolution is about. This is literally, it's happening right now in Toronto in several different places. And there's, what this revolution about is about is a call to action for all of you to not just be consumers of technology, but to be creators and to be empowered to author everything you own and your own identity. Thank you.